What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video as I've entered the modern day of technology. Yes, I've got a 1080p camera, I've got the mic back, I've got a new laptop, and I've got a new intro to boot. So we've been working hard the last day trying to make updates on the channel. Got a new MacBook Pro, so hopefully you guys enjoy all of that. But in this video, I'm going to kind of talk about some of the news that came out today, even though it's kind of recycled news in my opinion at this point. From Pat Leonard talking about both Dalvin Tomlinson and Leonard Williams as free agency is fast approaching and how the public perception may be different from the in-house when it comes to Leonard Williams and how the New York Giants have absolutely expressed that they want to bring this guy back at all costs. Now, just because they want to bring somebody back doesn't mean that they will. Of course, the New York Giants definitely have some challenges this offseason with the condensed salary cap. And in this video, I'm going to kind of give you guys an update of where the salary cap stands at this point in time. Hopefully the mic sounds good, by the way. If it doesn't, let me know in the comments below. But there's a lot of things that I think the New York Giants could do. Now, one thing that a lot of people on Twitter have said that they're very upset about is that the New York Giants haven't begun to restructure deals on the team. And there's definitely guys that you could look at, guys like James Bradbury, guys like Blake Martinez. You could give them an extension. You could do it for somebody like Kevin Zeitler if you plan to keep him, along with a guy like Nate Solder, and I'm sure there's other guys. The first thing I'll say to all of this is, it's easy to say that. That doesn't mean that the player will necessarily want to do it. Now, they may, they may not. Of course, a guy like Martinez is going to be a free agent in just two years' time. He's still going to be relatively young. He may view it as an opportunity to strike it big if he can continue to play at a high level for the New York Giants. And Bradbury may feel the same way. I personally, even though I think Bradbury's a better player and was better for the Giants last year, would probably feel more confident giving Martinez an extension before Bradbury because for the simple reason, we all know as corners get up there in age, if you lose a step, you could really fall off. We saw it with Janoris Jenkins. Martinez is a guy that kind of relies more on instincts and his head as a middle linebacker, not really known for his coverage, than a guy like Bradbury. I hope both are here for a long time, but if you ask me who I'd be more willing to extend at this point in time, it would probably be uh, Blake Martinez because as his athletic ability starts to slow down a bit as he gets older, I still think he could perform at near the same level. I don't know if I feel the same way for a cornerback, but again, this is pie in the sky stuff. We don't know if the New York Giants are going to be able to do this. And the people have complained on Twitter that the Eagles have done it, the Saints have done it. Well, yeah, of course they have. They have no choice. They're like negative $7 trillion in cap space. So they have no choice but to do it. The New York Giants are trying to keep that cap space clean. And when you look at next year's cap, they're going to have over $100 million. When you take the solder contract off the books, of course, that goes quick. That's not factoring in the players we're going to draft. That's not factoring in the players we may sign. For everybody that says, oh, just backload the contracts. You know, not you know, make the cap 8 to $10 million worse next year. Okay, well, now that hundred's ninety. Factor in the, the draft picks for this year and next year. That's about 13 to $15 million. Suddenly you're at 75. Then factor in the players that you want to sign this year in free agency that will go against next year's cap base, and suddenly you're at 50. And then you got to bring back guys like, you know, Pe uh, Peppers potentially, um, and you may want to extend somebody like Saquon Barkley. Barkley will absolutely, in my opinion, at least be extended on the fifth-year option, which will probably cost you another 12. So that cap space could go real fast, especially if you start backloading contracts. And I think the New York Giants view where they are right now in the process as a team that is not ready to compete for a Super Bowl. And if you're not ready to compete for a Super Bowl, you absolutely should not do that. That's where the Eagles are. Now, if it's one or two contracts, I understand that if it's a minimal backload, similar to like a guy like Sterling Shepard, for example, if it's a couple of million dollars, fine. If you want to free up some cap space, I think it absolutely makes sense, like I've said in the past, because of the market that we're in right now. But to do it, you know, do a crazy amount, $10, $12 million, well, then you start playing with next year's cap. And to be honest, it's all speculation. We don't know what next year's cap is going to be. We could assume that by then the stadiums will be at full capacity next year, increasing the cap, but we don't know that. The Giants have come out and said it'll be 15% capacity. So it's all speculation. You're gambling a little bit there. But I wanted to go over the cap space. I wanted to go over some of the things that the New York Giants could do. And I'm going to go over some of the quotes from Pat Leonard. First, let's take a quick look at the salary cap right now. If you look at this number right here, that's what they have according to Spot Track. Of course, this is off a $185 million cap. If you look all the way at the top, it says 187.9, but because that's including the near $3 million rollover from last year. It could be less than this. If you go on other sites, it's like 182. But based off a of spot track, which is what I use, we have about $10 million right now. And right now, that wouldn't even be enough to franchise tag Dalvin Tomlinson. And if the New York Giants even want the opportunity to be able to franchise tag either one of these guys, they're going to have to start cutting players or restructuring players 
real quick, and we're going to jump into some of the things that they could potentially do with the cash base. Before we do, let's go over some of the quotes from Pat Leonard of the Daily News, talking about both Leonard Williams and Dalvin Tomlinson. However, the Giants continue to match, and this is off GiantsWire.com, by the way, continue to match their public stance on Williams with the private one. Pat Leonard of the New York Daily News reports that the team has told Williams point blank they want him back in 2021 and beyond. This according to uh, to Pat Leonard. The Giants want Williams back. They have told him that. He likes it in New York too. They just have to make the money work. And that's easier said than done. Are the Giants willing to give him a five-year commitment? Because you could probably bet that another team would. And if I was the GM, I I would be reluctant to give Leonard Williams a three-year, a five-year commitment. Yeah, he was great. Yeah, I think he fits the scheme beautifully. But can he maintain this level of play for the next five years? Do you want to, you know, cripple your ability to retain some other players on this team? Guys like Dexter Lawrence coming up on contracts, players such as that. I think it's something you got to think long and hard about. I think it's a tough decision for the New York Giants. And like I said, just because they want to do it doesn't mean that they necessarily will be able to. Then they went on to talk about Dalvin Tomlinson. The Giants know that Pat Leonard of the New York Daily News that the team loves Tomlinson and, like Williams, won him back in 2021 and beyond. Unfortunately for the Giants, Leonard also noted that there's a good chance Tomlinson never finds his way back to East Rutherford, at least not with Big Blue. The Giants love Tomlinson. They will keep him if they can, but there is a good chance Jerry Reese's 2016 second round pick gets paid elsewhere. And it's what I've always thought. It's what I thought a year ago going into the season that ultimately, if Leonard Williams played well, which I thought he would going into the year, not necessarily as well as he did, that the Giants were going to have to choose one of them. I didn't think they'd be able to keep both because, yeah, maybe you could fit them under the current salary cap, but then you got to think about how that affects the future salary cap. If you were to retain both of these guys for their market value, especially if you're going to backload the contract to try to fit this year's salary cap, you're talking probably at a minimum of $35 million going against next year's cap at a position in which you've drafted B.J. Hill in the third round, you've drafted Dexter Lawrence in the first round, and you've shown the ability to be able to find defensive tackles in the draft at a pretty good rate um, with the New York Giants. Think back at some of the guys they've been able to get later in the draft. So to me, as much as I would love both back, my heart says bring them back, my brain says maybe not the best of ideas. Now, these are some of the things that the New York Giants could do in terms of the salary cap. And we're not even going to look at James Bradbury. They could restructure the salary, but he's only got two years left. And unless you're extending him, I don't think that works at all. I think you keep it as is. He's making about the same money next year as he is this year. And do you really want to be paying him more, you know, more like 20 next year? Probably not. Um, and Bradbury would have to agree to it. Solder's a guy you could absolutely be looking at. And if you cut him now, he's going to save you $6 million. He has a $10.5 million uh, dead cap as opposed to a $16.5 million salary. I've talked extensively that the New York Giants could wait till June 1st and it would give them an additional $4 million this year. Um, and it would it would save them 10 as opposed to 6 However, that 4 goes against next year's cap. And if you wait till June 1st, it really doesn't help you in your potential pursuit for guys like Dalvin Tomlinson and guys like Leonard Williams because I'll guarantee you by June 1st, those guys will be off the roster. But what it would help you with is depth signings and guys that I think will last deep into the process um, like Logan Ryan and so on and so forth. I think ultimately the New York Giants' best course of action with Nate Solder, if they're not going to extend them to try to lower that cost dramatically and give themselves the ability to get out after two years and maybe only pay him $10 million this year as opposed to 16 which is pretty much the same amount of savings anyway, unless they're doing that, the Giants' best course of action, in my opinion, would be to cut them before the start of free agency. And if they were to do that, that would give them another six on top of the already 10. So that get, that bumps you up to 16 real quick. Kevin Zeitler, we've seen the reports that have come out that the New York Giants are looking to trade him. That would save you 12. I don't know if that's the best of ideas. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of guards out there that the Giants could definitely try to bring in to replace him at a much you know lower va- value than the $14.5 million. Let's just play the game and say that the New York Giants either trade him, which I don't think they'll be able to do, or cut him, which I think is entirely possible, that would give you an additional 12, which would bump you up to 28. Of course, I don't, I'm don't. i not necessarily saying this is what I would do. I would try to work out a contract extension to lower the cost this year and maybe give myself the ability to get out after two. But let's just say they do that. That gets you up to that $28 million range, and suddenly now you have enough money to sign a guy like Leonard Williams. Then, you look at some other guys. Yes, I've talked about extending Martinez. That's, in, that's definitely an option. Shepard, you could try to maneuver some of the money um, because he's making a decent amount of money over the next three years. Possible, but I'm not going to factor that in. Then you got to go all the way down to the bottom of this chart because the rest of the guys are still, for the most part, on their rookie salary or a guy like Logan Ryan or Graham Gano, who just got an extension 
Um, but if you go down to Levine Toilo, I think he absolutely needs to be cut. That would save you an additional $3 million. Now you're at 31. Riley Dixon at 2.925. I haven't really talked much about him, but the more I think about it, the more I think it may be in the Giants' best interest to move on from Riley Dixon. And I, I love Riley Dixon. He made the Pro Bowl two years ago. This year he was an average punter. He's paid as the fourth highest punter in the NFL right now. And with the market decreasing, is he really worth $2.925 million? You could draft a punter in the sixth round and probably pay him $800,000. We kind of did that with Graham Gano this year at the kicker position, and you got great value out of him. Of course, we were probably expecting Rosas would be back. Didn't happen. Um, I, I think it may be smarter because ultimately if you pay the guy $800,000 as opposed to $3 million, you're saving 2.2, really $2 million because it's a $250,000 dead cap it. But if you cut Dixon, it saves you about $2.7 million on top of the 31. Now you're in the 33-34 range. And then you go to the back of this roster. Spencer Pulley's another 2.725. That brings you to the 36-37 million dollar range. Core's another two. I think it's an obvious cut. Now you're at 38-39. And then there's some other small cuts that the Giants can make before potentially restructuring salaries to give themselves the mu- the, as much ca- uh, cap space as possible. One being maybe Eli Penny. He wasn't really used much in the fullback role, and he's more of a receiver than a lead blocker. I didn't really like the role that he had. That could save you a million. Um, and there's some other guys on this list. Maybe a guy like Ryan Lewis, which saves you about another million. Um, and I'm sure you could pick and choose some other guys that the New York Giants could cut. But it's very easily, even without restructuring contracts, if the Giants really wanted to, of course, you'd be affecting your offensive line by cutting Kevin Zeitler, which may not be the best of ideas, and maybe the Giants feel like they could go out there and bring in another one. But I think they could get upwards of about $40 million without affecting next year's cap by doing some of these things. But if they do that, and if they're at $40 million, that still, in my opinion, does not give them the ability to retain both Dalvin Tomlinson and Leonard Williams. Because them alone, even if you structure it in a certain way, are going to go at least, you figure... 28 to $30 million against the cap, and that only leaves you with about 10 to $12 million of wiggle room, and you're affecting next year's cap dramatically. When you already have players on the roster, they could fill in some of those holes. So in the end, I think they'll bring back one. If I had to guess, it would be Leonard, but if the price is too much for Leonard, I think it's entirely possible that the New York Giants could take that third-round comp pick and let him walk. There's a lot of questions that need to be answered as we approach free agency, and I can't wait to find out how it all plays out. But as always, guys, if you liked what you watched, please subscribe, drop a comment, maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.